Hey, that's better. Hi guys, good morning. I'm Abel Zill. Uh, this is my live stream that I do every Sunday called Ask Zill Live. Um, today I have something really special to show you. Um, and uh, it is, uh, it's the Ark Tiny House. It's a, it's a house that I built two years ago and it is uh, back at my shop. Um, and the reason it's back at my shop is because it is for sale right now. Um, which, uh, I'll explain more about that in a moment. If you're interested in buying this house, then I'll give you some more details later. But for now, let's just have a look around it. Um, let's, uh, let me back up so you can see. Um, this is a house that's based on my fortune cookie design. It has nary a straight line. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm exaggerating a little bit. There's a, you know, straight line over there and... There's one right there and maybe across there, but really um, it's one of the most uh, kind of energetically flowing houses that I have uh, built. Um, so it's got the, uh, the round window. Um, look at the other side. Behind this rounded dormer is the kitchen area. And it's similar on each end. Uh, the ends are canted outward. And what that does, besides adding a lot of shape to the house, is uh, it extends the lofts outward from the main area uh, so that there's more open space in the interior. Um, this entry is based on, it's, it's loosely inspired by one that's built of stone with a really incredible wood door, um, maybe from like the uh, Art Nouveau or Art Deco era, excuse me, in, it's in Brussels, Belgium. Um, but other than that, we, you know, are, aren't very close to that design. Um, other than the, than the uh, door on one side and the round shape around to meet it. Um, so let's uh, let's go inside. Entered. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, well, here we are. Uh, I also have a tour of this up on my YouTube channel, so I'm kind of uh, I guess repeating that a little bit. Uh, but you know, I thought the live experience might be really interesting for you guys. Um, so uh, there's. First off, when you come in, there's a dining table. Um, this can fold down. I, of course, I have some stuff on it, like uh, wine glasses, which uh, and and this is a this is blackberry wine that I made. Um, I, I made I got like five gallons of it this year, which or this last fall, which I was really excited about. Um, there are ample blackberries on the farm where I live, so although they're an invasive weed, they they sure make good wine. Um, to the left of the dining table is the kitchen, and uh, the bathroom is at the end. And um, I'll hold you up so you can see the loft. Uh, this is one of the lofts. <clears throat> and then we're going to turn around and look at the other end. Um, there's a desk, an armoire, and the other loft. And this loft happens to have uh, privacy doors. Um, I'll show you how those work. Pencil wedging it, because uh, the house isn't exactly level right now, but... Um, you can close off the loft just like that. Um, again, I, I have to go up there to actually latch it shut, but there is the door that closes off the loft. Um, so let's... There we go. And... Um, Please feel free to ask me questions about this house. Um, I, I, uh, one of my favorite parts of it are the windows. And of course, from inside, I'm going to show you the windows and the, the camera's going to darken the image a lot, but um, you can get the idea of the shape. Uh, we uh, cut these sashes on a, a CNC router table, uh, and they're epoxy-coated uh, marine-grade wood. Uh, plywood that is, and uh, then we have insulated glass 
uh, custom shaped um, glazed into it. Um, so it makes for a really amazing uh, bunch of windows that are quite unlike uh, the square variety. Um, this house was not easy to build, it took a long time. Um, <laughs> it cost a bit to, to get together um, at the end of the day, but um, it, it uh, really kind of has its own personality. Um, so let's let's look at the let's look at the kitchen. Um, in this case, we uh, we used um, some IKEA cabinets. Um, IKEA makes actually really durable cabinets for the price. Um, they used to be really inexpensive, but they've um, you know, like upped their prices a little bit. Um, I also build cabinets in my shop, but in this case, uh, the client that I was building this for wanted uh, these cabinets, um, and they're they're actually really beautiful. Uh, there's a two burner cooktop with um, it's a propane gas cooktop and it has a really like enormous high output burner which is kind of unusual for a small range um, and above that is a uh, range hood and we used uh, leftover copper from the roof to do all of the backsplash um, and copper gets a patina over time. You can polish it with uh, stuff called Barkeeper's Friend if you want it to look shinier like this, or you can kind of just let it patina. It'll turn, in the kitchen, it'll turn kind of a brownish reddish color. Um, on the roof, it'll eventually grow its green um, patina. That takes a while. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a, this is oak and ash. Oh, and maple. So there's a variety of woods we, we use uh, to make this countertop. Uh, we clamped this up and surfaced it in our own shop. Uh, and then it, it happens to have a compact dishwasher, which I think this is the only house I built that has a dishwasher in the kitchen. Um, although I, uh, I actually love my dishwasher at my house. Um, my, I live in the farmhouse just over there with my <coughs> several children. And uh, because of that, a dishwasher is uh, kind of essential. Um, okay, I'm going to answer a couple questions here before I go onward. Um, Shakyamuni Kung Fu Buddha asks, do you have any feng shui training? I don't have formal feng shui training. I understand some of the concepts. Um, I have some friends that are enormously interested in um, feng shui, uh, but I... Uh, I don't specifically use it. I do um, respect a few of the basic rules, but um, you know, I, th I think a little bit of that kind of fundamental knowledge about how to build and how flow um, or energy in a house works is uh, there's a little universal knowledge uh, there that translates. You know, there's a little like cross translation between different philosophies of building. Um, Mine is pretty intuitive, honestly. I've built for 20-some years, and um, so I, I try to make spaces that work well for people. Um, and, you know, so that's kind of where I come from for energy. Um, but I do, you know, believe in, like, achieving kind of this aesthetic flow uh, as well. Um, okay, I'm going to answer the next question. Uh, sensei asks, do you ever have problems with rot around your wood windows? My parents' home had wood frames, and they just completely rotted out, causing all sorts of mold problems, too. That is a good question. I haven't had any any rot problems with windows that I've built. Um, <clears throat> and I take a bit of time to get uh, weathering details on the outside correct. You do also eventually have to maintain wood windows. Uh, you know, these uh, epoxy-coated which is kind of, I do less of these, but I, they, they, this, this you'd see on my, like, moon windows in my other houses. This epoxy coated sash, uh, needs just a, a paint, an, an overpainting every, I don't know, a couple of years. It depends on the paint you use. Some paints last a long time. So, um, needs, uh, exterior paint. Interior will last pretty much forever. Um, my solid wood windows with oil finish, uh, they, we usually use really nice wood, so they're not very likely to rot, uh, Usually rot happens in older wood windows because they've been 
uh, not maintained is the most common reason I've seen windows rot out. Um, also, the corners uh, sometimes don't get sealed, or people re-trim them when they put new siding on the house, and they don't do the weathering correctly, and so water is kind of sucked into the window frame, and it gradually rots it out. Um, so, I know why rot happens in wood windows, but wood windows themselves are actually able to last the lifetime of a structure. I've seen old, uh, there's the old vertical grain fur is the stuff you see in this region. Uh, these old uh, double hung windows and such and if they're kept well and not like I said re-trimmed in the wrong way for the type of windows if they have a little shelter you know like if the roof has overhangs they will last and this is a really wet climate where I live in uh, Pacific Northwest here um, they will last easily the lifetime of the house so you know I've seen like these 90 year old windows that are doing just fine and sometimes they can wear a little bit if they're used heavily, um, but you know, again, that's not insurmountable. So, wood windows. Um, I'll go on with the tour here. Okay, and though the internet seems to be working now, I oh, when I first started this stream, uh, I was it just kind of locked up. So I apologize if you tried to contact me earlier, but it I just had to shut it down and start it up again. Um, I don't know why that was. I'm actually, I ran this extremely long wire out here and set up my modem up under the house, believe it or not. So <laughs> I'm, I'm several hundred feet away from my, my house, so my Wi-Fi wasn't really up for, for this without doing a little uh, tinkering. Um, so here is, uh, let's just look to the side. There's a, I'm going to back up so you can see what's going on. Um, the kitchen on this side, and there's this kind of uh, bar or like a bar side table um, with some shelves. And I just put some, like, you know, tchotchke on it um, because, uh, you know, I, I did a video shoot, and I guess that's kind of what you do. I, uh, you know, like more blackberry wine and, and green peppers. and all. <laughs> Who doesn't need that? And here's, oh, look, it's my hat. Kind of love this hat. Okay, I'm going to go with it. Um, so, uh... Right behind the kitchen proper, uh, there is the refrigerator. And it's right behind this. If you close the bathroom door, you see it. So um, this house has this uh, two-door kind of side-by-side -side ordeal um, with a freezer over here. And then there is a little microwave that is looks like a mirror on the front, which, see, you can see what I'm doing. Here's my weird phone holder, so I'm not so shaky. Um, and uh, there's a thermostat to control the heaters right up there. Um, so then let's go right into the bathroom. Um, and I... Okay, I'll answer your questions in just a moment. I see some more questions came in, um, but I'll, we'll look at the bathroom. I'll crawl up in the loft, and then one of the questions is about lofts, so I will get right to that. Um, so, as you go into the bathroom, you notice this a rather enormous um, tub. This is a, it's a farm type tub, and but this particular one is, is kind of huge. Um, easily a couple people could sit in there. It's not a lay down kind of tub, but these are really deep. Um, they're much deeper than typical bathtubs, so they have the, like, the Japanese uh, soaking tub feel to them. Uh, then... Over on the side, there's uh, these shelves in the bathroom. And uh, the way the, that we created the shelves was that they would double as a ladder to the loft. So uh, I'll just show you how this... The lofts have um, trap doors you can close for privacy. And uh, you can uh, open them up here. Let me see if I can reach the knob. Um, it's always nice to have a trap door to get out of your bedroom. I kind of like that. Um, again, this is, you know, this is a loft for people that don't mind climbing a little bit. Um, let's go up there in just a moment. I just wanted to look at the other features here. Um, uh, the, uh, there's a really compact sink. This is like a, a countertop type sink. Uh, and it's right next to this composting toilet. Um, this is a uh, a, a bucket style toilet, but it has like a fan system in it to manage the um, the air pressure. You know, so it always it's exhausting a little bit. I think it also has like a pee separator, which usually makes them work a little better. 
Um, I don't know if you can see that. The bucket has a lid on it. Um, it's not being used right now, but, you know, uh, it, it, again, this house is for sale, so whoever buys it can uh, take the lid off the bucket and <laughs> uh, use that. Or it, it would be possible to replace that with a with a different kind if, if the bucket composting toilet doesn't work. Uh, there's a little utility closet um, here with the con basically the basic controls for the different systems in the house. Um, hot water heater, HRV, it has like a European, I'll describe that in a moment, uh, HRV system and uh, the electrical panel. But there's a uh, utilities for a washing machine, a washer dryer in here as well. So that's kind of cool. This is sized to fit a compact uh, washer or washer dryer combo. Um, HRV is, I set up this little switchboard to control it. Uh, Oh, there's the fan in the in the toilet below, but this these two control the mode of the HRV and the HRV is over here. Um, <clears throat> they're kind of interesting devices that s they breathe air in and out of the house, so it's, it's a way to ventilate your air, but it it reclaims the heat each time it breathes in and out. Not all the heat, but it reclaims some of it. And if you wonder what's sitting in the bathtub, um, the ba the bathroom didn't quite have enough light to you know bring the camera in, so uh, there's a that's my, that's my little light on a tripod. Um, that doesn't stay there, of course, um, unless you really like luminous baths. <laughs> um, it has a sprayer, and a, we don't have a shower ring up at the moment, um, but um, one will go back up here shortly. Uh, so, let's climb to the loft. Um, this is like such a repeat of the video that I just shot yesterday. Um, I... Um, I shoot my own videos for YouTube. Um, I, you know, I'm a builder. I'm not really a videographer, so you'll have to pardon the uh, the feel of them. But I, I, it, you know, it's something that is fun, and it, it, in a way, it's kind of like a little punctuation mark on the creative process. You know, like if I'm going to do a a look at one of my houses, I'd I'd rather have kind of crafted it myself than um, hire somebody and get some really like glossy, super glossy, schmoozy video. Um, okay, so we're in the loft, and the cool thing about the loft is um, that <sighs> I'm just going to lounge in this hat because this is like totally where it's at. Um, my wife has some really fantastic hats, <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, I can, I, I can really, uh, can really, uh, uh, what's the right word? It's like men don't have quite as many choices. There are some really good hats. Uh, I, I, I know a guy who has some incredible, like, top hats and bowlers and stuff, um, but they're really expensive. Nobody really makes them in mass anymore, so they're all handmade. Um, so, onward. Um, this is the loft. We're going to look out over the house, and I'm going to answer a question about this. Uh, so somebody asks, uh, let's see, Eric Wynn. Thank you, Eric. Gwyn, you're not just a somebody uh, to me. Uh, <laughs> how do you keep a toss and turn sleeper from rolling off the side of the sleeping platforms? Um, that is a great question. If you roll around so much that you would fall off and not know it, then uh, we we can put a, a railing here. Um, this particular person that I built this for didn't prefer that. Um, however, the other loft has doors and a center post, so you would have a really hard time rolling out of that one, unless you were like a, you know, a professional wrestler style toss and turn sleeper. Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty much up to the person. Sometimes the lofts don't really have a railing, and sometimes they do. Um, so, Lorna asks, what type of heater did you install? Uh... Heaters are, in fact, you can see them here. I'm gonna, this is probably a good spot because I can actually kind of crawl over and show you. There's these radiant cove heaters. They don't have any fans. Here we go. It's this long uh, a device that mounts high on the wall, which is really great. There's one down there, if you can see it, because it uh, doesn't take up any floor space or lower wall space. There's one in the bathroom as well, so there's a few of those. Um, and... Uh, there's a thermostat that controls them down there. It was above where the microwave was uh, that I showed you a minute ago. And uh, those are really nice. They're kind of a slow type of heater. So um, let me just back up so I can give you kind of a look at the main space here. So from the loft, um, 
you can see what's going on down there. Kitchen, table, desk, armoire, other end, uh, windows. And my favorite thing about the open center area of this house is the, the like the ceiling. Um, it kind of has this like graceful swoop over the window arches. Those arches run the entire length of the house. And this house um, at the tips of the roof measures 32 feet. So it's a full 10 feet longer than it is down on the, the trailer, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, Sensei asks, are, I'm going to turn around again. Are the galvanized tubs comfortable? They look like they have a seam that could possibly cause cuts. Um, <clears throat> that, uh, the answer to that is they are comfortable. They aren't as kind of sculpted as, uh, uh, you know, like a fiberglass tub or something, but they, uh, the seam, the seams here aren't sharp at all. They're, they're very soft. Um, they have this kind of like, rubberized mastic they put on the seams um but um yeah it's uh I, I don't know i find them enormously comfortable i have one in my own tiny house and uh i throw this hat back on the shelf and see if i can find another one um uh it's very comfortable actually um it's again if you if you really like like laying down flat they're they're a little different than that but when the water's up high, it kind of buoys your body, and so laying down is a little less important. It just depends on the person. I, I don't mind being squashed up in a ball. Um, if the tub's really small, and these tubs are, that tub's so big, you don't have to be squashed up in a ball. You can kind of sit with your legs straight out. Um, but, um, let's see. Uh, I'll take another question. Eric Wynn asked, since heat rises, don't you lose some efficiency mounting those heat units up high? Um, they're actually designed to be mounted up high. They are a radiant type heater, so when you're standing under them, you feel the heat from them. Um, and yes, um, the heat that they put into the air will will rise. So you know they'll some of the heat they'll they'll generate some heat um, out the top of the thing, but that's not their prime. They're not a, a a thin type heater. They're a radiant heater. So the front of this face heats up and and emits energy. And so you know some of the heat would be like radiated onto like the kitchen down here um, or even the floor and then it'll uh, it'll rise like any heat. Uh, one really useful feature in tiny houses, this one doesn't have it but it could be added, is a ceiling fan. Um, I'm kind of a big fan of using these little compact ceiling fans. You don't need a big one in a tiny house but a little one will get you a lot of... Uh, uh, it, it, makes the, it makes them feel just a little bit warmer because if you turn them on low because it circulates the heat back down toward the floor. But really, a tiny house is so small that it's pretty easy to heat the whole airspace up pretty quickly. So, um, you know, fan or no fan, that's kind of up to the up to the person. Coffee break. Okay, um, I'm gonna go on showing you guys the other end here, and then you know, I'm kind of gonna wrap up uh, early um, because not only is my phone a little low on batteries, but uh, I'm tired. I have been working really hard. I worked all day yesterday. Um, I worked last week, like exceptionally long days. So <laughs> I have to cash it in a little early on this uh, Ask Zill session. Um, this is the uh, the desk. Um, it's nice and large. Um, I have my I actually have my computer out here right now, which has been really useful while I have been working on this house. Um, this is the armoire. Armoire, however you want to say it. Um, has a, a bar to hang coats and dresses, shoes. Sorry guys if you've watched my, my video tour on YouTube, which I'm really kind of proud of. Um, I'm repeating a little bit of the pattern <laughs> here, but... Um, and then it has another storage cabinet underneath. Um, So this this loft also is there we go. And these lofts, um, if you put a mattress in here sideways, they are full 
size beds, um, which I'm five, nine and a half or so in a full bed works fine for me, but uh, everybody's different. A lot of people prefer queens. Um, you could, if you put the be uh, mattress on slight risers, you could push a queen mattress out beyond this sill here. Um, it would be very close to the window, so, you know, I think ideally a full mattress would function a little better, but um, you could fit a queen mattress up here if you really wanted to. Um, and then um, here are the opening windows. This window has a, a, a kind of a refractive film on it. Uh, when the sun shines on this, this is something that the owner was really interested in. When the sun shines on the film, it, it turns uh, the entire house into like a rainbow projector. Um, so I kind of left that on because <laughs> somebody can peel it off if they want later, but I kind of left it on there because it, it's just such like a amazing thing and I'm I'm into like you know clever lighting and luminous things so um yeah well that's it and I'll show you the storage that's in under this bar thing it's got these um tip outs um you could add some shelves to these if you want but I think that uh there's a a bag and a charger um but you can also store like flat items upright in here um so that is pretty much it. I think that the last part of looking at this house would be to like have a nice look at the entryway from the inside because it's just wonderful. Um, so gosh, thanks for joining me guys. Um, I will be back next week on Sunday. Um, to do the same thing, we'll be talking about building again. Uh, this time was a little bit of a of a of a distraction day, um, so I could walk around this house with you. But um, hopefully, that that's something that's interesting. Um, if you are interested in this house, um, it is for sale right now. Um, asking price is ninety thousand or best offer. I'm actually I have it here at my shop, but it's I'm selling it for the owner. Um, and, uh, the, the basic story, the owner lives, uh, right in the city. Um, he had it for, he, he had me build it for him two years ago and, um, he had a change of family situation. And in addition, he's kind of, he runs a small business, so he has to stay right in the city. Um, it, it just, uh, because of his change of like living situation, he couldn't keep it and he didn't really want to like rent it to somebody and have it be away from him uh, and not cared for. So um, it made more sense for him to sell it. Um, he said he might regroup one day, do a tiny house again. Um, but that just means this wonderful tiny house um, will be looking for um, just the right home for it because um, it really is, um, uh, it's really a one that kind of stirs, stirs my heart, so to speak. Um, and uh, you can, if you're interested, um, check out my website. I have a little link and a page up that describes what's included in it. It has a whole bunch of like energy reclamation systems. Um, I know 90 is a little high in my, uh, as it relates to some of my other houses, but I actually build this house new for somewhat more than that because it's so complex and because of all the windows that are in it. Um, so I think this is a really good deal because it also includes a whole bunch of uh, systems that aren't really included in my base houses. Um, you know, the ener energy reclamation stuff. There's a like a hot water reclaiming device that is connected to the tub. So if you take showers, it'll collect some of the, the heat and, and send it back into the supply system. Um, and there's <clears throat> the, uh, the heat recovery ventilation system. Uh, and there's the the there's like a, a a smartphone controlled lighting system so you can control all of the lights and the colors of them through your smartphone um it's, it's kind of fancy it's a philips hue system so that stuff's all included with the house uh and uh again if you're interested um check out my website if you're interested in seeing more of Ask Zill Live or my video tours and check out my latest one. Um, I worked really hard on it and I'm a little um, proud of what happened. Um, again, I'm not a professional videographer by any stretch of the imagination, but I, it, 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 was, it was a fun process. 
and that just went up on my uh, YouTube channel yesterday. And so, uh, yeah, check it out. And uh, if you are interested in seeing more of that kind of stuff, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you'll you'll hear about it when it uh, when it's posted. Um, I have a whole bunch of video tours kind of in my pocket, uh, or I should say footage. Um, when I when I get to it, I've been really busy building. We've got new designs all stacked up in the shop this spring. So really, the, what I've been spending my time on is designing a bunch of new houses, which is great. I'm super excited about that. Like one after another, I'm building new, new house, new house, new house. And um, I, again, will make sure that you guys get a chance to see some of that if you're interested. Um, but um, again, thanks for watching and thanks for asking me questions. And uh, we will see you next time. Oh my gosh, somebody asks, this is Eric Wynn again. Uh, what drone did you use? I have I have a Mavic Pro. Um, it's it's really a blast. Um, it's it kind of basically fits in my pocket. So, but um, it has this really beautiful video camera on it. I use it to do um, nature photography. So, uh, but it just happens that when I'm filming my tiny house, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get the drone out. Um, and I do that just for fun. I I'm not a again I'm not a professional for taking pictures. But um, I am a builder, and that's my main gig. <clears throat> okay, Reading one last question. Um, Sensei says, like hearing why tiny houses get sold. Um, yeah, every, every house has a story. Um, again, this one is just like any other. You know, times change and people change, and especially a big change in the family can... can uh, cause a shift and you know sometimes we just kind of have to reformat what our dreams are um, and nothing lasts forever so um, so what's one person's dream uh, can turn into another person's dream hopefully um, that's why I said I'm looking for the right person uh, if you guys know somebody who might be interested in this um, we're um, kind of waiting to see what offers come in over the next week and uh, then, you know, like Wednesday, I'll kind of collect those up and contact people back. And uh, we'll actually be doing an open house. So look for um, details about that. We'll do an open house on Friday, uh, this coming Friday. Sorry, I don't know the date off the top of my head, but it's it's the Friday that's coming up. Uh, so if anybody is really serious about it, come, come see, and I'll be happy to show it to you. And you can see my shop and my sheep and chickens. And uh, anyway, have a lovely day, you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.